a new gaming experience, combining blockchain and the metaverse. So joining us today, we've got Laura from LKI Consultant Consulting, and she's going to be our panel moderator. And we've also got, is it Ben? Ben, from uh, he's a Chief Business Development Officer at IDC. Um, I think Ben, we're going to have a very close discussion, just two of us, because our other panelists are probably lost somewhere. Do we have Marina and Stefan somewhere? Probably not, so we'll wait for them to come. I think Marina is in the interview. Hmm? She mentioned in the group she's in the interview. Okay, so probably... The rest, no. Oh, here is Marina. We have one more panelist. Please join. <laughs> awesome. And I know Celine won't be able to make it because she had a flight. And we have Stefan. Well, if he makes it, he makes it. That's okay. So I think first, what we should start off is to kind of introduce ourselves and see why should someone even be listening to us. So my name is Laura. I'm in a marketing agency for metaverse, blockchain, and NFT companies. I've been doing that since 2016 with a startup ICOs, and I have a few of really, really nice panelists here together with me. So Ben, would you be able to introduce a bit of yourself? Hi, uh, my name is Ben. So I am the Chief Business Development Officer at IDCM, which is an exchange. So I came about um, into the blockchain industry from in 2017. Before that, I was very much a web 2.0 person, traditional uh, financial industry person. I came from a listed background before. I came from private equity. I came from a lot of financial modeling, more so from traditional financial industry. So yeah, that's basically my history. I'm going to be short. My name is Marina. I'm from Ukraine, living in Spain. Uh, I'm into crypto world since 2017, working across different projects in the industry. And now I'm head of growth at NimTech, and we are building privacy infrastructure of the future. Well, I think Ben here is going to have a really good time surrounded with two ladies. And before we start, I know there's not a very big audience, but I still want to like everyone to be engaged. So how many of you here in the audience, raise your hands, are working with either Metaverse or gaming? Anyone raise your hands? Do we have some? OK, quite a few others who are in the phones, sort of-ish. OK, so let's say 50% of the audience will be our uh, target one. So of course, we all can agree that gaming will be the crucial pillar of metaverse success. But what will be the main factors that will boost the conventions, uh, conversions for conventional gaming to the metaverse? Ben? OK. Um, I don't think you should differentiate between gaming and metaverse. Because of that, by definition, the metaverse is actually about AR, VR. So it's experience. So now, bringing that experience and looking at the way that the conventional gaming happens, it was very much from a screen. Now, by having the metaverse, you're bringing the experience a lot closer to the gamer. So it's a natural progression rather than, than a conversion, I would think so. But if you look at a, from a conventional gaming to a blockchain gaming, now, there lies the difference. So when you actually convert from a traditional gaming where your assets are very much non-transferable. Assets bring, for example, the, S, the, the sword that you get when you're adventuring inside the game, the skin that you get when you purchase it, those are non-transferable. But when you come to a blockchain gaming, they become assets. They become things like NFTs, which are able to be placed on a platform for resale. Now, bring a transferable stage, that pushes people to now have assets and not something that they spend and when they stop the game, they no longer have own any ownership to it. It's nothing that they can um, monetize. Now, so there are many push factors. One of them I've just mentioned is about being able to now use that gaming experience, the, thing, the time that you spend in it, to obtain an asset which is now transferable through the mode of having an NFT. Amazing. Marina, would you like to add something? What would be the factors that can boost conversion from conventional gaming to metaverse. What else can... I would say two yeah. things. Capability and the hardware. 
what we have in right now it's still very like low scalable so if, if you want to go at mainstream you have to be something accessible on the phone something that doesn't require like uh, additional power com computing power and another thing is hardware people will not uh, play a lot to spend lots of time in the metaverse with the google that we're having right now this is why what we're going to see this year must probably launch a few like really good Googles. This looks just like our glasses that you can put on and instant connection without uh, any kind of additional procedures. I love this. I have having another panel in Crypto Expo where we all agree that once someone will create a very cheap hardware to play metaverse games, something very easy to obtain, like everyone has iPhones or computers, these are going to be exactly. the winners of the metaverse and gaming industries because now it's very, very expensive to buy the headset and it's like $400 or something, the cheapest one. It's not even about money right now. It's about that it's just not comfortable and it requires like you lots of actions. You know, you need to download this and that and then you put all this thing on your face, which is uh, super uncomfortable. You have to be comfortable. Your face needs to breathe that you can spend 18 hours, you know, doing things. Or for example, you're on the conference and you want to run a meeting. You just put your glasses on and you're on the meeting without like being, sorry, as stupid in this like Googles, you know. <laughs> interacting with yourself so it's very important I love it so anyone in the audience thinking to build something glasses easy to uh, to use you're gonna be the billionaires of the future and Marina let's continue a bit more on the marketing road you're responsible for the growth so tell me what are the different strategies marketing strategies companies that want to grow in metaverse need to use compared to conventional ones I mean, what we have it now, yeah, it's like synergy between Web 2 and Web 3 nowadays, right? And the, the forces of the marketing mostly focus on the social media, and we have influencers, we have some paid marketing campaigns. So I think it's going to be more switched to first uh, influencer first marketing. So it have to be like native ads, uh, NFTs, you know, you can make some limited NFT drops. Um, um, and... Um, events, in games events, if we're talking about games. For example, you know, you can get married, you can run a birthday, you can get a festival. So, so people will be approached more to socialize and to contribute and to build communities and events within the game, within the app. And the game's gonna be more like a platform rather than a service, like, like it's nowadays. Ben, maybe you would like to add something from the business developer perspective. What are the differences? What new should one think of? I think there's an evolution from Web 2.0 to Web 3.0. The way that things are being done, the way that, because I'm from a tra traditional financial industry, I see the difference between a community being built in Web 2.0 and Web 3.0. When it comes to Web 3.0, you have, they, it's a different um, community, it's a different behavior. They like to be approached differently. You look at your KOLs, you look at your influencers, you gotta make it relate to them. You have to make them want to do it. You may have to make them, um, um, how do I say, get into it themselves. So the key thing here is rather to not to market it to them, but rather to get them involved and get them to build their interests along into the community so that everyone then have the similar uh, interests and belong together and come together naturally. I think that is the key about community building in Web 3.0. I absolutely agree. This is a difference between the classic gaming and the metaverse. That community actually can build stuff within it, create stuff within it, and create like we have in the normal world, like replicas, right? So it's all about events, influencers, really engaging the communities. I hope everyone here is making notes because this is very valuable. This is gold. So. What are the other challenges that currently companies going into metaverse or experience? Maybe something from your uh, know-how, your track record you could share so they wouldn't make the same mistakes. The thing about gaming companies that are from your traditional aspect, they look at it in terms of um, the person that comes in, the subscriber, how much can he spend? So they go into the game, they spend money, they buy swords, they buy accessories, they make their gameplay better, they make their character stronger. Now, that particular trend is not something that's being practiced in the, in, in, in the blockchain gaming. So, 
uh, blockchain game itself, the gamification, there are two major types of um, drives. You have your token-driven model and you have your NFT-driven model. Your token-driven model, things are like, for example, your Excel Infinity. Last year, you had your Illuvian. These are things that are play to earn. So your tokenomics have been figured out in the right way so that when the player goes into the game and he plays, and from the, his experience of playing, from the, from the time span that he has gone into it, when he obtains the token, now, what is the utility of the token? For example, Excel Infinity, when they actually buy AXS to go in to actually buy the, uh, buy the monsters and NFTs to battle against each other, then it generates SLP, which is the in-game token, which allows them to trade to change to USDT that gets their rewards. But the SLP token economics um, are inf infinite. So when you have an infinite token supply, and the only utility of the SLP is to be used for mating purposes within Excel Infinity, it becomes very restricted. So utility is key when it comes to you coming from a game to a token-driven model. Now, if you come from a game and you want to go to an NFT-driven model, it's sort of a different thing altogether. Now, if you're going to mean to an NFTs, a lot of people go off what we call PFP, profile pictures. But from a profile picture, what is again the utility? What, how does a person when he owns that particular PFP, that, that, that NFT, when he goes to the game, how different is he from a normal gamer? Or are you saying that your game is just an inclusive environment where only the NFT holders can play? In order for a game to be big, it cannot be just that, for example, that 8,888 NFTs that you mean. It has to be the 88 other thousand people that come in and play. So for example, X Infinity, last year they were talking, previous years we were talking about play to earn. Now they are talking about free to play in order to make that ecosystem stronger. So NFT, how are you going to make it happen that the NFT holder and the normal player, how does he experience the difference? How do you make the normal player want to own that NFT? That drives the secondary market that will drive the value of the NFT up. Then, do you have sticking models? Do you have a token model? The tokens that are churned out from the sticking of the NFTs, do they have a value? Do you use it to buy white lists or other projects? Do you use it to actually be able to buy future NFTs minted from the same gamification project? So those are things that have been worked out. So I feel that right now for game to go on to it, they must recognize that there are a lot of differences. You know, they must recognize there's a lot of different economical applications to it, and they must plan carefully. If not, the project will just go down the waste. Amazing. So definitely need to plan ahead. Marina, what do you see from your perspective? What are the biggest uh, challenges the companies are having and what do you need to think of? I guess in this case, I'm going to repeat myself. Like, it, scalability is something that's really missing right now. We need some side chains that they can support this in the proper way in terms of the speed, in terms of the fees, and um, be able to host millions of people at the same time. And another thing, again, I'm going to repeat myself, have to be like accessible to any customer, any average person, not people like tech savvy, like you and me, but uh, average person who just have an iPhone, right? They just want to, if they want to interact, they just want to press the button and be in. And that's the biggest challenge. Another bigger challenge for the game designers, which are basically designers of the whole metaverse thing, as I believe, is uh, to make it possible to give a choice. So it have to be women, men, Asian, uh, black. I, I mean, I'm sorry, I don't want to be racist here, but any kind of nationality, right? Uh, any kind of sexual orientation, uh, pets, cars. It have to be like so much fully customized that the person can feel himself or herself or themselves <laughs> uh, just like in the real world. So it's going to be one-to-one -one interactions. So we need companies who can basically bring everything we have in the physical world to the digital world one-to-one. -one. And that's a challenge. Amazing. Thank you very much, Marina. So let's say there is a business, a gaming company going into metaverse, changing everything, they're there. So what are the opportunities for companies to grow? Could they do partnerships? Could they collab? Ben, maybe you can tackle more. I think this is definitely your cup of tea. 
I think that um, there are a lot of uh, possibilities for collaborations. If you look in terms like, for example, um, I believe it was uh, Prada with Adidas. They actually do a lot of cross-platform marketing where they actually use both of their IPs to create another NFT. So there are a lot of possibilities of collaboration. There are a lot of op uh, opportunities for companies coming to Metaverse. Because if you look at the Metaverse, you can use it as a gallery to present your products. And for example, there's been this play that's been done. For example, you are a person that you've decided that, okay, there's this particular sale of a limited additional item. Now, it happens at a specific time, okay? It happens in the Metaverse. So you have your profile, you have your character, you have your avatar. You can program your avatar to actually go to, the, to, the, to that particular shop that's online to buy at a specific time. And logistics will all be covered for the exact product to be shipped to your home. So you now, you now have an NFT picture of the product that you buy as well as the item. Now, when you go to the Metaverse, 3D, you look at the thing. You no longer look at something that is just off the screen. It's something that you can turn it around, you can adjust the colors, you can customize it, you can look at how you want that product, when it's going to arrive at your house. It's a very personal feed, uh, uh, experience when you're shopping. So there are many, many applications for companies going to Metaverse. There are also many possibilities for companies, brands to combine marketing where they actually um, look, take advantage of each other to create co-branding. Thank you. And Maria, do you like to add something or we can go to the next question? I think there are possibilities for everyone in this new world. There is so much business opportunity. This is a totally new economy. There is so much development and money to be made in, <laughs> let's be honest, in any kind of industry. Just imagine everything we have here just going to be switched in the virtual. So all the economics just going to be like doubled or maybe tripled because you save on the travel expense and many other kind of expenses by doing all, the, all this through the just Googles in your home office. Thank you. And as we have the last minute, let's wrap this up with a very easy one. What are the mistakes you're seeing and how can they be avoided? Something very quickly, Ben, Marina, one, two sentences. We mentioned just now about the feeling points, about economical applications. You need to figure that out in order to make sure that when you go into the metaverse, you don't do it wrongly. I just say we should stay humble and we should also not to forget like other nations that don't have access even to the internet. And we have to support those nations. And talking about uh, Ukraine, for example, we're generating crazy profits right now. I think it's responsibility for all of us to donate something because if not our Ukrainian soldiers, we all will be in danger. So donations to the countries who protect us. Thank you very much. And I think the audience now is entitled to a big round of applause to our panelists. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>